Greetings, Shannon here from Jiva Yoga Center on Hilton Head Island. I miss you. I miss practicing in the studio with you, and we will be together soon. In the meantime, myself and many of the teachers here have a lot of videos coming your way to help you stay in your practice and committed to your yoga. So I am going to take you through a 60 minute power flow and let's just get right to it. Start in downward facing dog. Spread your fingers out across your mat. Drop your head toward the floor and move around. Bend your elbows and your knees. Gently shake your head a little bit. Let's use the movement and this first posture of practice to get a sense of the mood of your body. And know that whatever is here is perfect. This practice is designed to meet you where you are. And now come to stillness and add about a half a foot front to back between your hands and your feet. Walk your fingertips to the front edge of your mat, your feet to the back edge of your mat. Soften the back of your knees and tilt your sitting bones up to the ceiling. And open up your eyes, see one physical point, establish your drishti practice. And open up your ears and listen for the sound of your breathing. Seal your lips and breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. Deep breath in. Deep, deep breath out. Inhale, walk your hands to the back of your mat and hang in ragdoll pose. Take your feet hip distance. Have both feet face forward, 12 o'clock. Bend your knees a lot. Catch your elbows with your hands and drop your head toward the floor. And bring a little movement here too. Sway left and right, forward and back. Explore the regions of your feet from the mound of your big toe across to your baby toe to the center of each heel. Strong contact points in every pose. Deep in your breath and hear it. To bring a little constriction to the back of your throat to create that audible quality of ujjayi. Breathe in. Exhale, let go of your elbows and walk forward to a high plank position. Stack your shoulders over your wrists. Lower your hips to the level of your shoulders. And press your palms into the floor. And tighten up your tricep muscles and your quadricep muscles. And activate Uddiyana Bandha. Pull your belly in and up toward your spine. And take some deep breaths and notice how you're building some internal heat. This practice is, is typically done in a 90 to 95 degree room, and I know we're limited somewhat working in our homes. So this is a great way to build some internal fire. Take one more breath and get longer from your tailbone to the crown of your head. And as you breathe out, press back to downward facing dog. Bring some more refinement to the pose. So look at your feet, place them on 12 o'clock. Turn your inner ankles back, outer ankles down. And if your toes are bunching up, bend your knees a little bit. Guide your hip creases away from your palms. Spin the inner creases of your elbows toward the front edge of your mat. Take a big, big breath in. Exhale it out, look forward, walk up to the front of your mat for ragdoll round two. 
You could take another arm variation. Perhaps you interlace your hands at your low back, or you could use a strap or two ends of a towel if your shoulders are tight. Lengthen your spine in the front of the studio. Exhale, keep your bind and bow forward. Drop your head heavy toward the floor. Little by little, straighten your legs and move your hips forward over the mounds of your big toes and send your finger knuckles up toward the ceiling. Tighten up your quadriceps. Let all the tension in your neck and your jaw go. Grab your feet into the floor, breathe out. Bring your hands to the floor, walk your feet together. Press down into earth and through a flat back on an inhalation, rise all the way up to extended mountain pose. Strain your arms up over your head. Spread your fingers apart, spread your toes apart. Take one more spine lengthening in breath. Bring your palms together and your thumb knuckles to heart center. Big breath in. Open your mouth, breathe out. Inhale for one ohm. Sun salutation A. Inhale, sweep up, extended mountain pose. Exhale, bow forward. Bend your knees a little bit on the way down, that's fine. Lengthen to a flat back and pause here a moment. Have your fingertips either outside the baby toe edges of your feet or to your shins and lengthen your tailbone to the back of the room, your collarbones to the front of the room, the back of your neck long. Take one more spine lengthening breath in and step to high plane pose. Lift your chin away from your chest, breathe in. Move forward, come halfway down to low plank, or you could rest your whole body on the floor. Upward facing dog or low cobra if you're modifying. Press back, downward facing dog. Come right back to your breath. Right back to your gaze. And use these two power tools to presence yourself and to stay in the moment. Gaze in your breath or what's going to keep you from rushing ahead and they're going to keep you from postponing. Just keep it simple. One pose, one breath at a time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Look forward. Walk to the front of your mat. Come to a flat back. Inhale. Bow forward. Extended mountain. Big breath in. Exhale, bow forward, empty all the breath out. Halfway lift, high to low plank. We'll pause at the bottom of your out breath, pull into center. Upward facing dog, press the tops of your feet into the floor. Downward facing dog. Repose, keep an element of ease, of sukha. Partner with that element of effort, stira. Stira sukha, balance action. Breathe in. Empty out, look forward, walk or jump to your hands. Halfway lift. Bow forward. Sweep up, one more salutation. A, pull the air in through your fingertips, the base of your lungs bow, forward, empty. Halfway lift, low plank step where you can jump to a bent elbow, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, get empty, walk or jump, halfway lift, bow forward, thunderbolt, bend your knees, bring your feet together, sit your hips low, 
Reach your arms up to the sky. Take a look at your feet. Take your shin bones back. You want about 80% of the weight into the center of each heel. Bring a charge to your shin muscles, your quadricep muscles. Now lift your belly another inch away from your thighs and take your gaze straight ahead or even up between your hands. Give it one more breath in. Bow forward. Halfway lift. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot forward. Warrior one. Drop your back heel into your mat. Straighten your arms up over your head. The bend your front knee. Ideally, you'll work toward a parallel front thigh. And that is only if you can maintain a lift in the front of your pelvis as you drop your tailbone toward the floor. So take one more giant breath in. Stretch up through your lateral body, all the way to your fingertips. Chaturanga, low plank. Upward dog. Downward dog. Left side, warrior one. Place your feet with precision. Front foot 12 o'clock. Back foot between two and three o'clock. Pull your left hip crease back, guide your right hip forward. The belly in and up toward your spine. Maybe you find just a hint of an upper back bend. Breathe in, low plank. Upward facing duck. Downward facing duck through your nose, breathe in. Open your mouth, breathe out. We're gonna take that on the road and move on a one pose, one breath count. All you have to do is listen for your breath to determine the pacing. You might be a half a step ahead, a half a step behind me. It's all good. We always meet in down dog. Here we go, breathe in. Empty out. Walk or jump, halfway lift. Exhale, bow. Chair. Thunderbolt, inhale. Bow forward. Half lift. Low plank. Upward. Downward. Right side, warrior one. Listen for your breath so you don't cut your poses short. Hit the peak of your in breath. Low plank. Pause at the bottom of it. Pull in. Upward dog, shoulders back. Downward dog, left side, warrior one. Spread out your toes, bang your fingers apart, big stretch. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Deepen your breathing. Hear your breath as evidence that something is starting to happen. Maybe some beads of sweat are starting to come off of you. Practice of transformation, moment by moment, breathe in. Empty out, look forward, feet to hands, halfway lift, long spine. Bow, pull in, give yourself a hug. Thunderbolt, big breath, stretch out your fingers, your toes, bow. Flat back, get long, float back, soft landing, <laughs> upward dog, mine up. Might not have been so soft. Down dog, right side, warrior one. Make your back leg strong like steel. Belly in and up. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward dog. Left side, warrior one. Bring your whole body to life. Grow from the earth all the way up through the clouds to the sky. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Listen for your breath. If it's getting a little manic, getting a little overwhelmed, you can always take child's pose with your knees wide and your toes together. Just do what it takes to stay on your mat and stay in your work. And that might mean inviting in more ease. Take one breath in, empty out, and go, feet to hands, halfway lift. 
Bow forward. Thunderbolt. Spread out your fingers. Bow forward. Flat back, long spine. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward dog. Right side, warrior one. Press into the floor. Pull into core. Radiate out. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Left side, go. With the outer edge of your back foot to stabilize the pose. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Open your mouth, clear out. Step your right foot forward to warrior one. And pause. And get stable. Drop your arms by your sides. Interlace your hands at your low back, or you can use a strap or a towel. And tighten up your back leg, tighten up your triceps, lift your chest up to the sky. Humble your crescent, keep your bind, and bow. You have a great view of your back foot. Can you get a little daylight under the arch of your back foot? Your toes are turning a different color, relax them. On every exhalation, drop your hips another inch closer to the mat. And every inhalation, pull everything into the center line of your body. One more full breath in. Go a little over. Maybe your head touches the floor. Maybe. And rise up to warrior one. Big stretch and a hint of a smile. Just a hint. Flow your mat. Chaturanga. Low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one. Okay, good space, front to back, left to right, between your feet so you're stable and you've got room to grow. Bring your arms by your side, take the bind, and take the opposite pinky on the bottom if your fingers were laced. Your belly in and up, Uddiyana Bandha. Move your shoulder blades, hug them into the spine line. Spread your collarbones away from each other. Humble it, bow. your eyes on one point, you pick a body part, your back knee if it's starting to cave in a little bit, then squeeze your back leg even straighter. Pull your left hip crease to the back of the mat and drop your head lower and lower. Find your edge and soften. Go to your edge and soften. Breathe in. Exhale your deepest point and rejoice as you come up into warrior one. Big breath. Finish it. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Bring your feet to touch. Lift your right leg up to the ceiling or the sky if you're outside. Bend your upper knee. Roll your hip open. A great place to stay and work from with your drishti at your navel. Or you could flip your dog. Land softly. Look under your left shoulder, follow your feet. Now place them intentionally on 12 o'clock. Launch your hips up to the sky. And extend your lifted arm toward the front of your mat. Take a look at your hand. Give it some expression. Create a strong power line from the center of your heart out through your fingertips. Go a little bit higher. Back to three-legged dog. Stretch your leg long. Draw your knee to your nose and hold. Push your palms into the floor and curl your upper back. Send your mid back to the sky. Tighten up your back leg. Look between your hands, crescent lunge. You can use your right hand to help your foot forward. Reach your arms up over your head. Lift your back heel up and away from your mat. Lower your back kneecap to a hover. Go ahead and bend it. More lift in the front of your pelvis. Take a little upper back bend. Arms by your side, humble your crescent. This time straighten your back leg and pin your shoulder blades to your spine. Bring your palms to heart center. As you breathe out, twist to your right. Look your left tricep outside your right thigh. And as you breathe in, lengthen, create expansion on your ingress through the length of your spine. As you breathe out, soften and corkscrew to the right side of the room. 
can keep your gaze down at your front big toenail. You can take your gaze to the right side of the room. You can take it up to your right shoulder head. A few more pounds, maybe you straighten your arms. As long as you can soften your bottom hand on something, the floor or a block, just don't want it hanging in midair. Five. Four, lengthen as you breathe in. Three, lift your back thigh up toward the sky. Two, twist, back to crescent lunge. Rise up, it might be a little wobbly, that's a-okay. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, right foot forward to warrior two. Get your heels on one line and take a little bit longer stance than you would in warrior one. Extend your arms out from your shoulders. Move your front kneecap forward and a little bit to the right. Breathe in, extended side angle. Bend your front elbow, bring your forearm to your thigh. Reach your top arm over your head. Now as you breathe out, create an open twist. Pull your left shoulder blade to the wall behind you. Work your left hip flexor back. Drop your hips closer and closer to the floor. Spread your toes out across your mat and keep your gaze steady. Take one more breath in. Vinyasa, low plank, or you can step right to downward facing dog, which is where we'll meet. Up dog, down dog. Bring your feet together, move forward to high plank position. Side plank, heels to the right, left arm to the sky. You've got a lot of options in this one. Traditionally, you could stack your feet like I'm doing, drive your toes up toward your shins. You could modify down with your knee on the floor, your left arm to the sky. You could amplify up, go onto your left big toe. There are as many ways to do a yoga pose as there are yogis in the world. You've got to find a way that works for you on any given day. Take one more breath in, lift, chaturanga flow. Upward, downward facing dog. Big, big breath in. Open your mouth, clear it out. Left side on deck, let's get it. Bring your feet together. Lift your left leg up to the ceiling. Bend your upper knee, stay, or if you're choosing to flip, go even slower on the transition. What information can you gather along the way? And how you place your body. Spin your inner thighs toward the floor, guide your tailbone toward the back of your knees. Just let it unfold, shift your vision. Be open to whatever shape it takes. Let's see one point. Bring some expression, so healthy to open up the front line of our body, especially in these uncertain times. A place of recept receptivity, breathe in. Three-legged dog, big stretch. Bring your knee to your nose and hover there. Pull in and then curl into yourself with some good core strength. Grow longer arms, look between your hands. Step, press a lunge. Sweep your arms up over your head. Bob your hips up and down a couple times. Let me keep some elasticity in your legs. You're not getting overly rigid. Bring your back knee to a hugger. You could even put your back knee on the floor if that's going to give you more stability. You want to make sure your feet are on train tracks, not in a single track. Take that upper back bend, thoracic spine, move it up to the chest, work your thumbs to the wall behind you. And humble your crescent. Reach your 10 fingertips to the back of the studio. Keep some lift off. Make your palms meet, prayer twist to the left. Now put your attention on your breathing and use your breath to guide your body into your fullest gesture of the pose. Lengthen as you breathe in. Rotate as you breathe out. You can stay with your hands in a prayer and use your left palm to help guide your right palm down and your thumbs to the center of your sternum. You could straighten your arms. 
Your chin drawing in, no strain in the back of your neck. Your belly up and away from your thigh. Twist. One more deep breath in. Twist. So pull everything into the center line. Use your core straight to rise up into crescent lunge. And soften your back knee. Big stretch. Vinyasa Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward to warrior two. Create a long line front to back. Your back foot might be closer to 3 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Extended side angle. Bring your forearm to your knee. Extend your top arm over your head. Take a peek at your front knee if it's starting to pull back or rotate in. Position it directly above your ankle. Now lift the front of your pelvis up as your tailbone descends. You want to keep a neutral spine. And then on every exhalation, start to spiral, belly toward the sky, shoulders into the spine line, press to the outer edge of your back foot. Take one more breath in, lengthen, flow, chaturanga, or you can go right to down dog. Upward facing, downward facing dog. Bring your feet together, move forward to high plank, heels to the left, right arm high side plank. Now choose the variation or modification that gives you the most access to your breathing. Now lift your hips up. Look your heels toward the back edge of your mat, your toes toward your shins, and bring your fingers to life. A little softness in your elbow joint. One more breath in. Chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward facing dog, inhale, open your mouth, breathe out, look forward, walk or jump to your hands. Halfway lift, bow forward, thunderbolt, bend your knees, prayer twist to your right. Look at your feet, see them, study them, wiggle your toes. Take all your weight back, at 80% in the center of each heel. Now drop your bum as low as it'll go and lift your belly up and away from your thighs. Now on every exhalation, spin your belly toward the right side of the room. You want to stack your right elbow directly above your left elbow in a perpendicular line. Or you can straighten your arms. Notice how one leg wants to work more than the other. You want to be 50-50 distribution in both legs. Five. Four. Generate heat in your shin muscles. You want them to burn hot. Quadricep muscles burn. Three. Two. Ragdoll. Separate your feet. Hook onto your big toes with your first two fingers and thumb. Make your palms face each other. Lengthen your spine to the front of the mat and bow forward. Enjoy this. Take a load off. Let your torso get really heavy. Shake your head yes and no. Move a little bit left, right. Move out your toes. Move your shoulder blades in toward the spine line. Guide your hips forward over your heels. Stay active in the front of your legs, passive and receptive in the back of your legs. Look at your toes, walk your feet together, bend your knees, thunderbolt. On your exhalation, prayer twist to your left. Just work your way into the pose, breath by breath. There's a little bit of, not a tug of war so much, but a tug of love. Working your hips down, contracting in, and then generating some space between your thighs and your belly. Certainly some soft space between your eyebrows. Don't focus your eyes on one point. Maybe your top shoulder. Maybe your left baby toe. Maybe a dot on the sidewall. Straighten your arms. Drive your shoulder blades into the spine line. Keep your toes light. Breathe in. Sit as low as you possibly can. Breathe out. Inhale. 
bring your hands to the floor. Separate your feet, Gorilla Asana, walk up onto your palms. Climb up there, get your toes past the creases of your wrists. Bend your knees generously, you want your belly on your thighs. Lengthen, straighten your arms. Now, bow forward. Wiggle your toes. Keep moving your hips forward. Your hands work as a little braking system. At the same time, while you're trying to pull your hands out from under your feet, you want to press your feet into your hands. Action, reaction. Breathe in. Exhale, slide your hands out from under your feet. Crow pose. Get right in there before doubt takes over. That space of hesitation, no good. Just get right in there, come what may. Maybe one toe comes out of the nest, maybe the other. Draw everything into center line, inner edges of your feet to touch. Pull your elbows in toward each other. A little longer, the lightness, maybe a smile, breath in. Low plank, you can step back, you can jump, upward dog. Downward facing dog. Together, breathe in. Ah, breathe out. Listen closely. Step your left foot. It's your left foot forward to warrior one. Wrap your right arm under for an eagle arm. You can wrap your wrists if that doesn't work. Take hold of your shoulders. Now tighten up your back leg. Lift your elbows up to the sky. Humble your ego. Guide your elbows in toward your belly. Drop the back of your head down. And bow down to earth. And bow down for what you stand for. Be true to yourself. Maybe today it's just be willing to get uncomfortable, to stay on your path, and build some strong resilience. Drop your hips a little bit lower. And keep the integration in your legs and your core. Rise back up. Keep your eagle arms. Steady your gaze out in front of you. And move into full eagle. Slide your back leg forward, up, and around. Hug yourself in. Drop your tailbone down. Lift your elbows up in line with your shoulders, your wrists, directly above your elbows. And when you, as you breathe out, nest your eagle. You pull everything into center line. If you get a little wobbly, so what? You just come back in and begin again. You pull everything in. Half moon. Unwrap slowly. Bring your left hand to the floor. Your right hand to your head. Keep your gaze down to start to create some stability. Bottom foot on 12 o'clock. Claw with your left hand or use a block. And peel your right hip open toward the ceiling. Reach your right arm up if you like, not required. Move your shoulder blades into the spine line. And get longer from your left hip crease to your left armpit. Stay with this. Bring your right hand to your hip. Take your gaze down. Bring a little softness to your standing knee. Warrior two, big step back. And if it's a thud, so what? <laughs> Spin your front palm, reverse your warrior, and make your way through vinyasa to downward facing dog, or you can step right to down dog and meet us there. Upward, downward facing dog, right foot forward, warrior one. And the good news is, is you know what's coming. You want to keep the news good by not trying to anticipate anything. It's creating a new experience here. Left arm under right, eagle arms. With your elbows, your fingertips to the sky, tighten up your back leg, and bow. Begin an offering. Deep gratitude for this practice, this community. Go a little bit deeper, pull your right hip back, press your outer edge of your back foot into the floor. Now my foot wants to go flat here, I'm gonna work the outer ankle. Tighten up your legs, press down into the floor, pull into core to rise up. Drop your hips an inch and transition to full ego. You can drag your back foot over. 
Again, start with traditional eagle where you stack your joints on the vertical plane, shoulders over hips. Drop your tailbone like a plumb line to the floor. And nest your ego. Work your elbows in to center line. Fingertips to the front of the seat. Pull everything in. Contract, contract. And a big expansion into half moon. Unwrap. Right fingertip to the floor, left hand to your hip, and open everything up. And you take your gaze up. Your left hip back, left shoulder back, bring your left hand to your hip. Take your gaze down and slowly, like you're moving through a Tai Chi class, really slowly, slowly, gradually step back. Warrior two. Spin your front palm reverse and cartwheel down through low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Exhale out. Look forward, walk, or jump to your hands. Halfway lift. Bow forward. Sweep up. Bring your palms to heart center. Deep breath in. Open your mouth, breathe out. Tree pose, balance on your left leg. Bring the bottom of your right foot either to your inner left thigh or to your calf. Your palms to heart center. And source the pose from the ground up. This is standing big toe mound, baby toe mound, center of the heel to the floor. And pull everything into the midline. You can stay with your hands in a prayer. You can reach your arms up to the ceiling. Give your pose an expression. Take your gaze up. Heart up. One more. Big breath in. Bring your palms to heart center and live in the transition. Just move. Keep the flow from one side to the other. Smooth out your brow, the region behind your eyes, your jaw. In the middle of all this, uncertainty, instability, you are here. Doing your best and working with what you've got, and it's enough. Even if you tip out, reach your arms up over your head if you like. One more big breath in. Bring your palms to heart center. Feet to the floor. Come up to the front of your mat if you're not there. One more standing series and we're down. Inhale, sweep up. Bow forward. Halfway lift. Vinyasa or meet me in back dog. Right foot forward, warrior two. Set up for trikonasana in the triangle. Go longer front to back, out about a half a foot, so you got some nice space to grow into. Straighten your legs. Reach your right arm forward as you pull your right hip crease back. And keep reaching until you can't reach anymore. And lower your right hand to the floor or your shin without letting your left shoulder take you down. Your left shoulder stacked above your right shoulder. Put your left arm up to the sky. Spread your toes out across your mat. And work your breath. Lengthen as you breathe in. And open as you breathe out. One more full breath in. Exhale out. Push your feet into the floor to stand up. Turn your right foot in to face the left side of the room. Bring your hands to your hips. Set up for a wide-legged straddle fold. Drop your tailbone toward the floor. Work your elbows toward each other behind you, heart up. Bow forward, bring your hands to the floor, straight down from your shoulders. Lengthen your spine. Bow forward. And play with your stance. You might need to narrow the stance if your head easily touches the floor. You could go longer if your head is really far away from the floor. You could take tripod headstand. The outer edges of your feet into the floor. Breathe in. Exhale out. Come up halfway. 
Bend your right knee and take a quarter turn to the front of your mat. Bring your hands to the inside of your right foot. Turn your right foot out to a 45 degree angle. And take lizard pose. Starting position, you can have your back leg straight. You can stay on your palms. You could, depending on how much range of motion you have in your hips today, you can come to your forearms. You can lower your back knee down. In great position to, to really emphasize your ujjayi breath. Breathe into those areas of stuckness, not just physical strain, emotional strain. Our hips are containers for tension. So breathe through that. About five more counts. You want a really deep quad stretch. You can sweep your right arm back and catch the top of your foot. Your body will tell you if that's an appropriate idea or not. You can lower your forearm. Move your shoulder blades into your back. Take one more round of breath in. Exhale, gently let go of your foot if you have it. Make your way back to downward facing dog. Take a full round of breath in. Exhale out. Left foot forward, warrior two, into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Spread out your toes, straighten your legs, and create long lines, especially from your left hip bone to your left armpit, get long. Left hand to the floor or a block, right arm up to the sky. And pay attention to your front foot. Make sure that you're pressing through the mound of your front big toe mound, so that you're not rolling to the outer edge of your front ankle. Take big breaths, Just embody all the space you created up to this point, and manifest it in this beautiful pose. Breathe in. Exhale out. Rise to stand, turn your left foot in, take a bind at your low back, you can interlace your hands, or grab two ends of a, a towel or a strap, hard up, bow forward. Gaze at one point, your navel, or point straight out from your eyes. Stay with your drishti practice, your ujjayi breath. And bow in deep gratitude to Mother Earth. When you are in the now, you know how, and you're home. So gently let go of your bind, bring your hands to the floor, bend your left knee, take that quarter turn to the front edge of your mat, turn your left foot to a 45 degree angle, and get up onto your palms, and work your way into your variation of lizard. It doesn't have to mimic what happened on the other side. So wonderful about this practice, it reveals all our postural habits, where the imbalances are, and you have an opportunity to recalibrate and balance everything out. I just want to stay in the space of inquiry instead of judgment. Just get curious. Judgment doesn't do any good. Inquiry does a world of good. Reach around and take the bind with your back foot. Maybe this leg is a little tighter. Mine is. <laughs> I don't know why, that's why I'm in the inquiry of it. Use your exhalations to soften, to soften into those dark, uncovered spaces. Breathe in. Exhale, if you have your foot, gradually let it go. Make your way back into downward facing dog. Big, big breath in. Exhale. So a little bit of back bending. And we'll work our way towards Shavasana, what you all came for. Deep rest. Stand up on your knees. You could have your toes curled under or you could have your feet flat. It's a preference. Stack your hips over your knees. Bring your palms to your sacrum. 
Work your elbows toward each other behind you. Notice how your palms can help guide your tailbone down into a neutral pelvis. Tap into that upper region of your spine, that space between your shoulder blades, the thoracic spine. It's like you've got a marionette line on your sternum guiding you up. Open up your throat now. You might even be able to go deeper and reach for your heels. Only to the extent that you can keep your hips stacked over your knees. Keep working your upper arms into the midline. Tailbone heavy, belly in and up. Heart up, heart up. Breath in, breath out. Bring your hands back to your sacrum. Rise up from your core strength. Press back, downward facing dog. From down dog, walk or hop through to a seat. And lie down on your back for bridge pose. Bring your feet on 12 o'clock. Lift your hips up. And walk your shoulder blades into the spine line. You can interlace your hands at your low back. Or use a stat strap or a top. And just as you did in camel pose, keep neutral in your pelvis. Guide your tailbone toward the back crease of your knees. Working your shoulder blades in. These back legs are so great. Bring your spine back to its factory settings. Life wants to pull your spine out of your body. Just working it back in. Take one more breath and bridge. And come down, lower slowly, upper back, middle back, lower back. We have one more back bend. You can stay with bridge or I highly encourage wheel pose. Bring your hands up outside your ears. Press your hands and feet into the floor and on your in breath, press the floor away and breathe your way up and work it out. You can shake your head out. Straighten your arms and breath by breath, get a little more space. You bust through a little more resistance. Straighten your arms, your legs, work your chest to the back edge of your mat and let your head hang freely. Stay here, five, four, go beyond the physical form of the pose. Put your attention on what you want to have happen and be for it. Three, go to your highest point, your highest point, two. Tuck your chin and slowly descend. Upper back, middle back, lower back. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Butterfly your knees open. Place one hand on your heart, one on your belly. Sukha Konasana. All of that good, good, good work manifests. A little scan from the crown of your head, the jaw, the base of your neck, down the length of your spine, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your toes. Where are you holding unintentional tension? And give it up. One more breath in. Exhale. Stretch everything out, reach your arms up over your head, extend your legs long to the front end of your mat, spread out your fingers and your toes. Maybe stretch the left side a little longer, the right side a little longer. Come to center, hug your right knee into your chest, interlace your fingers just below your kneecap on your shin. And extend your left leg long and lift your heel to a hover. Just a good low back stretch, modified. You bring your forehead to your knee for a little deeper stretch and switch sides. Flex both feet. Hug both knees into your chest and rock a little bit left and right. Massage, massage your low back. Happy baby, take your knees wide, touch the outer edges of your feet, or you can grab onto the back of your thighs. Guide your sacrum toward the front of your mat, and guide your shoulder blades down onto your mat. Look the outer edges of your feet toward the floor if you have your feet.
Press your left foot on the floor. Place your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Take a reclined figure four version of half vision. Thread your hands through your legs. Interlace your hands behind your left hamstring. And draw your thigh and your ankle toward your body. You can use your right elbow to help guide your knee open. You can move a little bit with this active stretch. Keep your left leg at a right angle so you're not just kind of flopping. That's some action in both legs, both feet flexed. Extend your left leg long, hug your right knee into your chest and take it across for a supine twist. Extend your right arm out from your shoulder into a capital T shape. You can keep your gaze up at the ceiling or you can take your gaze over your right shoulder. No need to get your knee to the floor. More important to press your shoulder blade into your mat, your right shoulder blade. Exhale, breathe out and twist. Come back to center, give your right knee another squeeze, a hug of love, place your right foot on the floor, place your left ankle bone on top of your right thigh. Thread your hands through, interlace your fingers, and go the non-habitual way. Take the opposite pinky on the bottom. Recline half pigeon. With equal length on both sides of your body from your armpit to your hip. So if your left hip is hiking up, guide your sit bone, your left sit bone toward your right heel. Deep Ujjayi breath, stay with it. Unclasp your fingers. Extend your left leg long toward the front of your mat. Hug your, or your right leg long. Hug your, hug your left knee into your chest and take it across. Your supine twist. Press your left shoulder blade into your mat. Exhale. Bring your knees into your chest. Hug your knees into your body. Give yourself a big squeeze. Shavasana. Sway your ankles out to the corners of your mat. Palms face up. Get any little fidgeting out of the way. Rock your head a little bit side to side. Relax your shoulders, your jaw. Through your nose, deep, deep breath in. Open your mouth, breathe out. And I know how tempting it might be to run off your mat since I'm not actually watching you, but do your best to stay on your mat. Give yourself this five minutes of Shavasana to clear your space, your mental space, emotional space. Keep your attention on your breath the sounds that are right here in the room. And take your attention off of your thoughts and meditate in Shavasana.
deep breath in. Exhale out. And some movement to your fingers and your toes. Gently rock your head side to side. Bring one knee at a time into your belly and roll over onto your favorite side. And curl into a little ball. On your next inhalation, press yourself up to the seat. And cross your legs. You can prop yourself up on a block or a blanket. Sit up nice and tall. Relax your shoulders, your jaw. Bring your palms to center. And your thumb up goes to heart center. Close your eyes. Just take a moment. To notice the shift of when you first started on your mat to where you are now. All the space you created in the short amount of time. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. One ohm inhale. Oh. Um. Your thumb knuckles to your forehead center. Breathe in and bow to each other and say Namaste. Namaste, Jiva Yoga community. Thank you for joining me and stay connected. We aren't physically together, but we are connected. Reach out to us on Facebook, on Instagram. Give us a call. We're here for you and we can't wait to see you again. Thank you and have a wonderful day.